So in this video, I will be answering the question that I have been getting asked pretty much daily. And that is, in my opinion, who should California gun owners vote for? So let's talk about this. But real quick, before we jump into this video, if you agree that Gavin Newsom needs to be replaced, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also wanna give a shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, and that is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. I also wanna let you know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition, so head on over to joinfpc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, in this video, I'm gonna be covering the California Gavin Newsom recall and the potential candidates and kind of their two-way politics. This is a question that I'm getting asked pretty much daily, people wanting recommendations of maybe who they should vote for based on the recall and based on their two-way politics. Now, in this analysis, I'm gonna be going through the lens of two-way issues primarily, but I understand that not everybody is a single issue voter. And since pretty much I myself is not a single issue voter, However, two-way issues are important to me, like a lot of you, so I weigh my decision heavily through um, who I would pick as a potential candidate based on their two-way politics. So now let's look at the main candidates to replace Gavin Newsom. And I think the most popular one that I would say is the most popular, and you guys would probably say is the most popular, is conservative radio host Larry Elder. Now I took a look at his website and I could not find any firm platform on there that actually said his stance on firearms gun control and the whole gun control issue in the state of California and the various gun laws in the state of California. I did uh, watch some various videos and um, kind of discussions and, and debates type things that he had uh, leading up to this whole recall. One of the main ones was the Cal Matters um, discussion that he had. He talked primarily about removing masks and vaccine mandates, um, trying to do some sort of state of emergency on homelessness, a state of emergency on water. Now, one of the main things that I gathered from some of his discussions in the Cal Matters discussion is that he said on multiple occasions that if he had the opportunity, he would appoint originalist judges like Clarence Thomas and Antonin Scalia. It seems like Larry Elder is a huge fan of Clarence Thomas, and he said if he had the opportunity to replace judicial officers, he would try to put judicial officers that think like Clarence Thomas and Antonin Scalia. So for a lot of us in the 2A world, in the 2A realm, we are big proponents of individuals like Clarence Thomas and Antonin Scalia. So if Larry Elder is saying that he would put those types of judges in place, I am all for that. And I'm sure a lot of individuals on the pro 2A side are very much in favor of that. Now he's made various statements that he opposes gun control, that he opposes the strict uh, gun regulations in the state of California. He has various videos on YouTube from his radio show, and he's had various news appearances that he makes it clear that he is not in favor of gun control. But again, something important to note is that nowhere on his website or anywhere else can I find a platform where he says he's specifically going to address a lot of these California gun rights issues. So my general feeling is that it is not the highest priority that he has, and with a lot of these candidates, as far as 2A rights and gun rights in the state of California, it is clear that that is not the highest thing on their priority. Things like homelessness, taxation, wildfires, vaccines, all that stuff is of higher priority to them. The next main candidate that I'm going to talk about is John Cox. Now you may recognize that the San Diego businessman, John Cox, was a Republican nominee back in 2018 and ran against Gavin Newsom, where Gavin Newsom actually won by a clear landslide. And yes, he is also that individual who has gone around on the campaign trail with a live bear. I don't know who told him that that was a good idea, but yes, he is that guy who's been running around with a live bear. Now, again, as far as gun control, he has no clear gun control platform on his website. And again, with a lot of these individuals, except for one individual, which we'll talk about later, they do not have a clear platform on their websites or they have not stated clearly what they're going to do as far as gun rights in the state of California. Now, I did watch an interview he did with uh, Mike Schwartz from the Gun Owners Radio. Mike Schwartz is a friend of myself in the channel. He was at the Armed in May event that we did recently. He's also part of the San Diego County Gun Owners Association, really good guy. But he did an interview with John Cox and one of the things that they asked him was specifically about the Second Amendment and kind of what his stance was on that and what was his stance on the California two-way issues. Um, he stated, John Cox stated that he's a lifetime member of the NRA, which I'm still baffled that a lot of these politicians throw that out there like it's supposed to mean something to us when a lot of us really in the two-way world, we know that the NRA and someone being a lifetime member of the NRA means absolutely nothing. Um, but he threw that out there so you can take that for whatever it means. Uh, he stated that he believes in the Second Amendment. Um, he believes that 
Uh, California has some of the most stringent gun laws. However, we have some of the highest crimes. And so he believes that more stringent gun laws, of course, is not the answer like a lot of us believe. Now, one really interesting thing from this uh, discussion from John Cox that I kind of give John Cox kudos for is this was in the wake of the whole Miller v. Bonta, uh, Miller v. Becerra decision, which was a challenge to California's assault weapons ban. Mike Schwartz asked him what was his opinion on Judge Benitez and his ruling in that case. And John Cox actually said that he read the Benitez opinion. He stated that he was not a huge fan of Judge Benitez using the Swiss Army knife analogy. Um, I think some people have taken issues with that. I don't take issue with that, but just something to note that John Cox kind of took issue with that. And a lot of people took issue with that kind of right after that decision. But he also said he read the opinion um, and that he agreed with a lot of the crime discussion that Judge Benitez had in that ruling. And also he concluded this whole discussion by saying that there is no such thing as an assault weapon. The state of California is regulating assault weapons, but he doesn't believe that that's an actual thing, which we all agree that assault weapon is just simply a made up term. So that should give you some understanding of who John Cox is. He's someone who's run for governor in the past. He's lost to Gavin Newsom as far as the two-way realm. It seems like he's pro-gun. He's kind of tuned in a little bit with some of the main cases that have come through. But again, Miller v. Bonta was a really big case. It hit national headlines. So not super shocking that he read that opinion, but it seems at least that he agrees with the Honorable St. Benitez as far as St. Benitez is ruling. So hopefully he would actually back other cases like that as well. Now, the next individual I want to talk about is Kevin Faulkner out of San Diego or the former mayor of San Diego. I think he is someone who originally had a lot of hype. A lot of people were very uh, pro him and were getting behind him. But then once Larry Elder kind of showed up onto the scene, a lot of his backing kind of fizzled out and a lot of people shifted over to Larry Elder, in my opinion. Now, one of the most notable things when it comes to Kevin Faulkner out of San Diego was that when he was the mayor of San Diego, the city and the city council passed a gun storage law. And this was a law that required individuals to have firearms locked up in their home with a trigger guard and just wouldn't pretty much allow them to use them for self-defense. Now this is coming from the press secretary of Kevin Faulkner when he was the mayor of San Diego, when this whole issue kind of popped up. The press secretary stated that home invasions in our county are a real problem and the mayor believes that self-defense serves as an important crime deterrent. His press secretary went on to state that he also recognizes the need for safe gun storage because firearms in the hands of the wrong person can be dangerous. They stated that the mayor only has a few choices when the council passes an ordinance. He can sign it into law, veto it, or take no action and allow it to become law anyways. Now, an important thing to note is what Kevin Faulkner did on this issue is he did not veto it. He did not even veto it based on a symbolic gesture. Instead, what he decided to do is do absolutely nothing, did not sign it, did not veto it, and just let it pass anyways. Now, this likely would have passed regardless because the city council had the votes, but at least as a symbolic gesture of his support of fighting against this type of gun control, he could have vetoed it, but he didn't. Now, in my opinion, the last thing we need in the state of California when it comes to gun rights is a Republican whose middle ground is going to want to work on these gun control issues we don't need that. There's been way too much of that. Instead, we need people who are going to fight against any type of gun control that is introduced, even if it's just simply symbolic and just adds an additional roadblock to potentially deter Democrats from wanting to introduce these types of bills. I would much rather prefer that than someone to say, well, I'm not really gonna be able to do anything about it anyways. I'm not even gonna try to veto it. Now, the last individual we're gonna be talking about is a really interesting individual and is someone I knew about even before this whole recall stuff, and that is Kevin Pafrath, from Meet Kevin. Kevin Pafrath is a YouTuber, real estate broker, and is a really popular YouTuber. Um, and he has a YouTube called Meet Kevin. Kevin Pafrath is running as a Democrat, and he says he is running as a JFK style Democrat. Whether or not that's true, it's kind of yet to be seen, um, but at least I will give him one thing. What he has done that these other candidates really haven't done is he has actually outlined very clearly what he would do as far as gun control on his website, he has stated very clearly what his opinion is, what maybe solutions he would have, um, his stance on gun rights in the state of California. And a lot of these other candidates who are even supposed to be Republican haven't even addressed gun control on their websites at all. On his website, Kevin states that those individuals who are trained, legal gun owners, and background checked shall have more weapons rights in California, such as carrying concealed. California compliant weapons rules and the California handgun roster have increased gun violence, not reduced it. At the same time, we have to understand gun violence has many causes from mental health, poverty, 
economic reasons, depression, and more. To eliminate gun violence, we need to focus on all those priorities while restoring liberties for Americans. So that sounds good, and I think a lot of you, when you hear that, it sounds good. He's talking about California compliant weapons. My assumption there is he's talking about the assault weapons ban. He talks about the handgun roster and how those types of restrictions have simply led to more gun violence in the state of California, which I would agree. I don't really like the term gun violence. That, that's thrown out there a lot. It's just crime. Um, it's not anything that can be attributed specifically to the gun. Um, but again, it's a term that's thrown out there a lot. He states it there. On his videos and on his website, he has stated that when it comes to firearms in the state of California, he would like to institute what is known as a multiple tiered licensing scheme. Um, he stated that this will be based on an individual's hours worth of training. So the more training and hours of training you have, I guess the more benefits you would have. One thing that he has stated that I don't agree with, and I think a lot of us is just gonna be a non-starter of wanting to vote for him, is that he wants to make mental health screening a basis for an individual to be instituted and given a carry permit in the state of California. Now, I don't know if this is a fundamental misunderstanding of how uh, firearms licensing works in the state of California. When it comes to you having to run that background check to purchase a firearm or to get your concealed weapons permit, they are already running a background check that is looking for and screening for any mental health issues that you have had but it seems like he wants to go a step further and have some sort of additional mental health screening or testing for an individual to be given a permit, which I'm not for, I'm sure a lot of you guys are not for. So that's gonna be a non-starter for me, but let's take a look at what else he has stated. He has also stated that he would like to give special privileges based on the hours of training. Now he doesn't say what exactly the special privileges are going to be, but for me, and I'm sure for a lot of you guys, that's gonna be a non-starter because I don't like the idea of you having to have a permit to actually exercise your second amendment rights and for you to have some sort of benefits. I don't like this barrier to entry for a fundamental right of you having to have a permit or a license to actually exercise those rights. And also I think there's a fundamental lack of understanding that a lot of us are already going through training requirements. We're doing the four hours for renewal, the eight hours to actually get issued a permit. So it seems like he wants to tack on more requirements to the permitting scheme. And he says that he wants to make this a shall issue state, but that's really not what he's doing or would do through this platform. A shall issue state is someone who doesn't have any requirements whatsoever. You simply apply and based on your fundamental right to keep and bear arms, you're given a permit. You don't have to go through all this additional training, testing, mental health uh, testing. That's not how shall issue permitting works. It really what he is doing here is just kind of growing the May issue and adding more requirements to the May issue scheme. But at least, like I said, I appreciate that he has some sort of platform and has at least outlined what he thinks would resolve this and make concealed carry permits more available to people. But I just think the way he's going about it, it's just not gonna be really in favor of us 2A individuals and a lot of us 2A peoples just can't get behind that here in the state of California. So those are the main candidates and what I could kind of gather as far as their stance when it comes to 2A rights in the state of California. Based on all this, my research, what I've gathered, I think the best bet is going to be Larry Elder. One of those main factors, like I've stated, is going to be the popularity. I think he has the most popularity behind him right now, so has the greatest likelihood of winning. And also, I think that whenever he has been faced with the issues or discussions about gun control or gun rights, he's been very much in favor of gun rights and very much been opposed to gun control. He doesn't have a specific platform yet on gun rights, but like I said, a lot of these Republicans don't right now. Um, it's unfortunate, I would really like them to finally fill out what your actual plan is for on your website so that a lot of us 2A advocates can get wholly behind you and see what you're actually planning to do. But I think there's enough resources out there as far as videos on Larry Elder, discussions, debates that he's had to actually make it clear that he is very much pro-gun and anytime a bill is gonna be introduced, he will at least veto it, line item veto it, or at least add some sort of road bump to the Democratic legislators who are always trying to pass gun control in the state of California. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It signals to YouTube that you see value in these videos, in this type of two-way news, and then it pushes it to more people. Thank you to everybody who's liked, commented, and subscribed. You guys are definitely helping the channel to grow these videos to grow. We are rapidly approaching uh, 200,000. Hopefully we can reach 200,000 by the end of the year. I think we can definitely do that. So thank you to everybody who's liked, commented, and subscribed. Just go ahead and comment down below if you don't have a comment in mind that you're commenting to fuel the algorithm. And also if you're a new subscriber or someone who's been lurking for a while and just recently subscribed, 
Make sure you comment down below that you're a new subscriber and I will make sure I comment back to you. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars. This nation will be maintained by armed scholars.